What's going on everyone? We are back and today we are going to be doing a really good beginning farming strategy. It is also what I am going to be doing along with Sanctum because we don't know if Forbidden Tomes got nerfed so far that it's not viable to do those early. So I'm going to have this as either a backup strategy or I'll just end up doing this either way. Now for the first part of this video I am going to go over the uh, Atlas passive skill tree and you know my reasoning behind that and things you can do as you get more points and where I am going to go uh, and you know give you some leeway to do some your own stuff with it uh, and then I will go over kind of real quick how to do the mechanics just kind of an overview but I'll save that for closer near the end so people that already know how to do these mechanics don't have to skip through a whole bunch of stuff they can just basically stop there as always before we start getting into it please make sure you like and subscribe the channel if you are not yet and go get followed um, on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash safe on talk. Links in the description along with our Discord. Please join the Discord. A whole bunch of good people in there chatting, and we're all very excited for the league start. And we'd love to have some new people, whether you're experienced or a completely new POE player. All are welcome over there. Um, it's just a great place. All right, so with the Atlas passive tree, you will notice a couple of things. One, I have 41 points left. That's because I don't want to use every available point because I have all of them unlocked except for one. That is not reasonable for a starting uh, guide to obviously have the entire atlas complete. So I did not put all of the points in. Secondly, you will notice I have all of the nodes for Metamorph. And in 3.23, Metamorph is gone. But the reason I put these points in is because these nodes are going to be changing to Ultimatum. Now they will not be shaped the same. They will be a little bit different, but it will be very close uh, to this and we will not be putting all of these points in all of the um, Larger nodes of ultimatum. Uh, we know for a fact one of them makes them incredibly hard We will not be using those uh, for a while until we have much stronger builds But just to be safe I decided to just put points in all of them to kind of highlight where the ultimatum uh, Nodes are going to be and one of the great things about it replacing metamorph is it is on the left side of the atlas passive tree which means we get closer to searing exarch and the essence nodes essence nodes here and here um yeah so the left side of the passive tree is very strong for beginner builds and it's no different for this league so that is what i am going to do now you start down here and we will start by going straight up the middle going down and then branching off from this spot now I suggest when you are first starting out to complete your atlas, you go watch the video I made a couple days ago about a quick way to use Wandering Path to get a bunch of connected maps and ping pong your way around the atlas to get as many points as possible very quickly. Uh, go watch that video after this if you are not sure how to get a bunch of atlas points very quickly. Um, and then you can come back, start getting some orbs of unmaking, start taking points out of stuff like Wandering Path, and then starting to make your way over here. Now if you do that strategy, you will have these nodes um, set and what you're going to want to do is kind of work your way out of this and just kind of stay more on the left and kind of avoid things near the wandering path. Now because we are not using any scarab or sextants or anything like that in the map device, stream of consciousness over here is very very powerful. You're, you cannot use things like scarabs and map fragments or anything, but you will get 50% more base chance to contain extra content. This is very strong in the beginning. If you are not juicing your maps, and even strong at the end, if you still don't feel like using scarabs or anything, which I don't feel like doing 95% of the time. Anyways, so I have this on pretty damn often. Now as far as order is concerned, uh, I suggest getting to this node relatively quickly to get the Searing Exarch Altars to pop. They are very strong. Um, you might want to, if your build is not super strong yet, and struggling with ultimatum, you might want to go... Uh, over here and then kind of skip some of these ones in the beginning just to make your way up to the essences faster and ping-ponging your way up to these uh, These are amazing because you can do these in any tier map tier 1 maps to tier 16 maps It does not matter. These drops are going to stay the same with the essence crystals. So this is oh why it is one of the main things that's in almost every starter farming strat because it doesn't matter if it's tier 1 or tier 16 it does not matter. These are still incredibly strong. You are going to get these same essences. 
This one over here, you can kind of prioritize this last also. Um, it's helpful because the invitations start to really grow in price after the first week or two. Uh, people start boss farming, start trying to get the forbidden flame jewels and things like that. Uh, but not incredibly needed, so that saves you, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about seven points that you can spend in other stuff. Now, say there's um, something that you really don't like, say you end up not liking Ultimatum. I'm pretty sure I'm going to like it. I've never done it. I did not play that league, but it looks very exciting and very cool. I am going to play it, and I'm probably going to love it. But if you don't, you have some extra points, or you're getting close to completing your atlas and you have extra points, what I would suggest doing and what I am going to do, you do not have to do this. You can pick other stuff. You can start doing ritual or some other stuff on the left. But what is great about going over here also, or anywhere on the map, is you have these eldritch gateways. There's uh, three gateways. Uh, this one right here is going to put make it so you can put a point right here, and then you can start going things into harvest, which is what I will probably do. I will end up adding harvest. Harvest is a great farm. Life force is very uh, great to sell in the beginning or even uh, use when you use the horticrafting bench. There's a lot of really great things you can do with that. Um, so it's completely up to you. But harvest is great. Don't worry. I'll go over a little bit about harvest works near the end of this video if you've never done that. Um, as well as essences and when to corrupt them. But over here you can get these harvest nodes. You can get this gateway. You can go over here. Start getting these. Um, these will reduce the plants you get, so you want to put points into the ones that you don't want to see as often. So I'd, I'd probably put those um, in the purple. And then there is another one right here. That is very good. Okay. And then down here, there is some more that you should already be connected to because you have stream of consciousness. Um, That one's very uh, important. This one isn't that, isn't that great? Um, you know, the 10% chance to spawn additional monster is good. I guess the 200% increase experience uh, is decent if you're trying to level, but not the end of the world. And then the last ones just make it so harvest appears uh, more often has a higher chance and you can put those in them. And that is a pretty solid tree right there. So that's what you would do um, if you had extra points to spend or if you didn't want to do something like ultimatum, you can see these nodes are kind of out there. Uh, you could save a lot of points if you didn't go into these. We might not even want to go over here when we finally get to see the tree because these ultimatum nodes might be absolutely terrible. So who knows? We'll have to see when it gets out there. So this is not set in stone, but this is a pretty good starting point. Also, don't forget these uh, essence nodes down here. You eventually want to go into those. Um, when you do, it's up to you. I usually go up the tree and start making make some progress uh, before I get this one. Uh, but a very good one contains an additional essence that's going to guarantee you get at least one essence in your maps. Now the last thing with the passive tree is these nodes right here. The monsters in prison have a 10% chance to gain a remnant of corruption, which is these things right here. Okay, What these do is there if there is an essence that is not already corrupted, you can right click it and left click the essence and it is going to corrupt the essence. What that will do is gives it a chance to upgrade the uh, tiers of the essences that are in that essence. Now, this is very helpful in the beginning when you do not have a lot of remnants of corruption. But when you have these points in um, and you get plenty of uh, remnants of corruption, you want to take this out because if an essence is already corrupted and contains an essence of corruption, or a remnant of corruption, um, you cannot corrupt it in upgrade, so that gives us less a chance to be able to corrupt the good essences. So you kind of have to feel it out once you have a solid amount of remnants of corruption saved up. You can take this out so you have more essences to corrupt because they will not be corrupted already when you find them. So when you see an essence, the first thing you should look at is if it has a purple one that starts with an M, E, D, or S, or meds for short. That's misery, envy, dread, and scorn. You will see this has a shrieking essence of dread. You are going to want to hit that with a remnant of corruption, and you want to see it added in essence, and it did not change the um, other ones too much. Um, it still stayed a shrieking essence of dread, but it has a chance of upgrading to one of the highest four tiers, and only the purple ones can do that.
Now, if you are running low on essence or remnants of corruption, do not um, start corrupting ones that do not have one of the purple essences in them. And you may want to still corrupt ones that have four or five essences already. You can see this one has two and they suck. Don't don't hit this with a remnant of corruption. Just do it normally. Now, when there's a lot of essences, the mon monsters in them, uh, the boss monster gets stronger. So don't be afraid to, if you don't want to backtrack too much, put up a town portal before you open it in case it is a little rippy. Um, like this one's really easy. You know, kill it, do that, move on. So for this one, I would probably hit it if I had a handful of uh, remnants of corruption on it. Uh, this is Screaming Essence of Spite. It follows the meds rule, but it is not purple, so the spite does not count. You want scorn, not spite. So I would hit this anyways and try and upgrade everything. Uh, nothing crazy on this one. Uh, so you just kill it normally and move on. Not the end of the world. Now, the ones that we really want are things like Essence of Insanity, Essence of Horror, Essence of Hysteria. These are the ones that sell for the most. They all sell good at the highest tier. Some sell uh, higher than others. Um, but uh, that is what the purple MEDS ones have a chance to upgrade to. This is an essence tab. This is um, a microtransaction tab uh, that I got that I like a lot, but you do not uh, need to get it. You can just throw them in a tab. When you want to sell them in the beginning, you can either sell them on bulk on TFT, but in the beginning, uh, I would just sell them singularly. Um, especially if you don't like TFT, it's fine. Sell them singularly, but I would still sell them kind of in bulk. So if you did that, you can make this tab uh, public, each item individually priced. Click this checkbox. Then you'd go down here and say, I want to sell these 11 for, you know, uh, 10 chaos. You would literally put exact price. I want 10 chaos for 11 of these essences. What you want always goes on the outside. Click OK. It will sell it like that. I was going to go into how to sell using the bulk TFT tool, but for some reason uh, it is not working. I don't know if it's because um, it's standard and I have so many tabs, or if it's just because the league um, is, you know, the league is over, everything moved to standard. It is literally a couple days before the league starts. Uh, so I won't be able to show you that. I have other videos, if you check my other farming videos um, that I did for last league, a bunch of them have essences as farming guides. You can go see how to use the TFT bulk selling tool and sell all of your essences in bulk, which eventually will be the way you are probably going to want to do it. But for a leak start strategy, selling them like that is perfectly fine. A metamorph just ran up on me and I was able to give him a proper send off. See you later. Now, Sacred Grove. You will see the Sacred Grove and the icon, this blue thing right here. Um, this is very simple. You basically just want to use the nodes that have the higher uh, blue number at the bottom. Some of them won't even have a blue number. This number is the monster that is guaranteed to drop the life force. So you want the one that's higher. Now you see these are both ones. Which one do you want? Well, that you'll have to see which is worth more. 99% of the time, the yellow is worth more than the blue and the purple. So this one's kind of a no-brainer. So you would pick this one. You can see how they're paired off. These two these two and then these two so when you pick one the other one is going to disappear unless you have one of these um, you have the which one is it uh, harvest in your maps have 10% chance for the unchosen crop not to will so there's 10% chance when I pick this one this one will stay up very simple that's all you do is go through for these see these are both whites they don't have any blue monsters so they are kind of garbage so I would do the yellow because the yellow essence is worth more purple and blue are more similar they get kind of close together so just check the prices if not uh, just pick one of them they're usually about the same now this one is one yellow and two blue monsters I would pick the blue here because yellow is usually not twice as expensive as blue so the two on the blue are more important okay so I would pick the blue because yellow is not two times as valuable if it was twice as valuable as blue and it was close to tw twice the value then these would both be equal you can pick whichever one you want but this one would be the blue because this one is worth um, more. So you start it, it'll summon the first wave, and then it'll summon a second wave and the magic monster that was guaranteed uh, to drop. Or okay, that was the magic monster. Those are just some monsters that also have a chance to drop the life force um, along with the other magic monster because remember there was two. Uh, pick up your life force. You'll see the other crop wilted. You go over and just do it for this. 
Um, you know, and for this one, we would pick the yellow one. Do our buffs. Uh, wait for that one magic monster to drop his. And then you know when it's done because the crop uh, icon will disappear. Now, if you're playing a range build, these are a little bit easier because they can get a little tough. I'm playing my stupid OP armor stacker build, so uh, that made it look stupid easy. They can be a little hard, but not really. It's something too hard to worry about, especially for your range. You can pop the plant and then just back up over here and then just keep mashing on it. Sometimes the um, plants will have an orange one that will be a boss. Um, most of the time you're going to want to do that. And it can drop a sacred blossom, which will summon the uh, Oshabi fight, which is a nice fight. Uh, it can drop the sacred crystallized life force, I believe it's called. Uh, that's usually worth a round of divine. Uh, the sacred blossom is always usually worth a round of divine. Also, if you just want to sell it, instead of risking doing the boss and failing. But uh, she's not too hard. I don't know. You might want to look up a video. On how to fight her just to be careful one of the nodes that i did an entire video on that i think is very strong but makes it so you have to think a little bit more is crop rotation i'm not going to explain that here if you're new to harvest i don't suggest doing this for a little while um i like it because it's more of a thinking game you kind of have to plan out which crops and it can give you insane pops on life force uh, multiple bosses on some crops and it can be hit or miss um, so yeah, high reward, uh, high risk kind of strategy when you use crop rotation. We're not going to go into altars in this video. They're self-explanatory. You pick the um, Searing Exarch influence when you run your maps. Eventually you are going to get it. Keep running maps until when you hit you, you will start to see the Searing Exarch um, quest line, which looks like this. Searing Exarch, it'll tell you exactly what you need to do to get the Searing Exarch unlocked, beaten, and then you will be able to click on this button to put the Searing Exarch influence on your maps. Run your maps like that. Sometimes as you kill the Searing Exarch monsters that appear, an altar will have a downside, but also say something like, um, some of your things are reflected back at you, but the Searing Exarch monsters have a 4% chance of dropping a Chaos Orb. They're very strong, they're pretty self-explanatory. Not gonna go into them here. Uh, you know, you can either look up in our video, or just play it, you'll get it. And then as you do that, this ring will fill up as you complete maps with the influence. And on the last one, when you kill the boss, it will drop the Searing Exarch Invitation. That will sell for quite a bit, usually around a divine. Uh, also at the halfway mark, it drops this kind of mini invitation when you kill the boss. Um, sometimes um, I just hold on to them and run them, use them as kind of a damage check. Uh, the boss can drop the Polaric Devastation Ring, which in the beginning, of the league is usually worth a divine or two because a lot of ignite builds mm -hmm. like to use it but yeah that's about it with searing exarch now for checking the prices of these things i highly suggest using awakened poe trade the link to this program um, is in the description it's very trusted it's been used for years and years now and it'll make it so you can hold control and hit d as long as you are on windowed mode so you can do full screen windowed mode poe you can hold control hit d it will pop up and tell you what it's worth so uh two chaos for one seems to be uh what well this is standard i wouldn't take these prices to heart but that would generally what you would do it would show you what it's priced at the lowest and you can just kind of pick um maybe something that's not the absolute lowest but a little bit higher so you aren't going too cheap um be a little bit more patient with your deals unless you really need the currency um then you can price it for the lowest now, if you don't want to do that, you can always check prices by going to the Path of Exile trade site uh, at pathofexile.com slash trade. We're going bulk item exchange. So you want to see the price of an essence. You can go to essences, find the essence that you want, essence of delirium, and say, uh, I have chaos orbs. And then you can just click search, and it will say, see, um, on average, if you want to go to the low, they're worth about 30 chaos for one. You can do the same thing with essences. You would just go over unclick this essence go over to exotic currency and click save the yellow essence and you will see you know about 500 will get you 50 so it's about 10 chaos orbs for you know it this is all standard i wouldn't take this to heart but this is how you would do it uh, if you didn't want to use awaken poe trade to sell the essence um or the life force do the same strategy just throw it in a tab usually with these i wait till i have enough to sell for a divine orb so i'd look up the price and I might say I want one divine orb for my 3700 essence. Then I would click on this thing, the drop down, click divine orb. 
Now, keep in mind, even say it was 4800 for a divine that you needed to sell it at, you can put it at that price and it will not list it until you put uh, that amount on there. Uh, so even if you have 99 and say this is 4000 for a divine, you can put one divine for 4000 and it will stay there and then it will just list it once the stack becomes 4000 so you can just keep uh you know putting your essence in your, or your life force uh in the stack and then once it hits the point you want to sell it um you can do that now if you're really slow at getting the life force you might not want to do that because then by the time you know you get that stack that's worth the divine the price might have raised and now you're selling it for way too cheap and you're going to get spammed and then you know ah oh, crap okay price has gone up i got to you know, uh, lower this a little bit, uh, just so you aren't screwing yourself out of some currency. Now, the last one would be ultimatum, but I don't have any footage to show you, and I've never done it before, but it seems very self-explanatory. You know, the first wave is easy. It gives you a shitty reward, and then as you go, it gets harder um, and harder, and then you can either take the rewards you got, or you can just uh, keep pushing it and pushing it to get better rewards, and it gets harder and harder by giving you debuffs, and certain other things that make it tougher. Uh, I think there's four different ways things that pop up. There'll be one where you have to guard something in the middle. There'll be another one where you have to stand in a couple little circles. Uh, another one will be just to survive. There'll be different things like that. Seems like it'll be pretty simple. Um, at the end, if you make it all the way to the end, there's a chance that a boss will spawn. Uh, yeah, and I plan on doing that uh, quite a bit, and it sounds very exciting. And then the leak mechanic. Obviously, we weren't sure how good this is. Um, a couple ways this might be um, interesting is if the wisps from the leak mechanic uh, can go in the essence monsters and make them stronger, which might be awesome or it might be awful, depending on how good your builds. We will have to see on that. Also, the life force that drops from the harvest monsters is completely um, ratioed with the amount of quantity on your maps so if you can always chisel your maps as white so you only have four chisels to get them up to 20 percent quality get that quantity up and then if you can run them magic or even rare uh, or rare corrupted even uh, that is going to help you get more life force so if the wisps can somehow get in the harvest monsters because some of them increase the quantity i believe it might be the yellow ones um, or maybe the purple wisps i don't remember if they can get into the harvest monsters that will be very beneficial also but we don't know we will see uh, there's a more, better chance it will do the essence monsters than it will the harvest because even though the essence monsters are technically entombed in that crystal they are still there um, so maybe you could even maybe if that didn't work you could pop them and then do the um, league mechanic and then it would get on them uh, but who knows we will see but I think that's it guys um, if I miss anything, you will see it in the description. Always check the comments because a lot of times people will add stuff that I did not say in the video, either because I forgot or because I was like, mm, I don't need to make this video 30 minutes long. I'm going to skip that. It's not super detrimental, but it's always good just to go through the comments, see if there's anything that uh, I may have missed or something that might be beneficial that might not be crazy important to the video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, guys. Tell me what your farming strategy is going to be. Tell me what your league starter is. I want to know in the comments. This feels like it's going to be one of the most hyped leagues in at least the last three or four. Um, people are incredibly excited about the new gems. I'm super excited, um, and I can't wait for Friday afternoon. I will be streaming almost my entire league start, and for the foreseeable future, I even took Friday off from work, I'm going to be streaming all damn day. So make sure you follow over on Safe on talks uh, twitch twitch.tv slash safe on talk so you can come hang out with us um and i love just hanging out with you guys and hearing what builds you are going to make uh and all of that good stuff so yeah everyone thanks for everything uh thanks for watching and we will see you next time and this will probably be my last video before the league starts so let's friggin go